So we got the story about Baker Mayfield sees a UFO. And then I said, give me a break. I don't want my quarterback saying that. And Tom Brady shouts me out on Twitter and says, Colin, how do you know I haven't seen an alien? So these quarterbacks are all after me now. I will say this. <laughs> okay, I will say this. <laughs> Every time I hear about this, I've always had a theory, Neil, that some of this stuff is space junk. That, that, and I've seen some of that stuff. And if you get away from light pollution in, in, in small towns, you see a bunch of stuff. And some of it could be our government that doesn't want to give a heads up to other governments or us working on military projects. That is my theory. Is that nonsense or is some of that true? It could be all of the above. I mean, so why would the government want you to know if it's experimenting on top secret aircraft, for example? So they're not going to want you to know. And by the way, uh, in the 1960s, the there was Project Blue Book. Uh, a subtext of the Project Blue Book, wh which, by the way, was the investigation of UFOs, was, by the way, keep reporting them if you see them, because it could be a Russian experimental aircraft. Right. And we were in the middle of the Cold War. So if you crowdsource the monitoring of the sky, then you can be way more effective than just simple... Um, uh, regional military observations of what might be happening up there. So, so sure. And by the way, um, <laughs> if you see a UFO, it, it just means you didn't know what it was. That's what the U stands for, unidentified. So it's not a problem if your quarterback sees something in the sky and they don't know what it is. What else are they going to call it but a UFO? So give them a break. All right. Cool. All right. I'll scale back on that. <laughs> okay. I want to show you. I want to show you, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> From 1905 to now, I'm going to show you a map of UFO sightings in America. Cool. And there's a lot of them around New Mexico and Arizona. There's a lot um, Midwest, Great Lakes region, a lot over there. It looks like Virginia, New York City. When you see any of that, does that mean anything to you? Um, why would they be in those areas? Well, so, well, first of all, you'd expect there to be more sightings where there's a higher population. So therefore, you see more green dots near Chicago and in the Northeast Corridor and uh, over L.A., San Diego, as I, as I recognize these places on the map up there near, near Seattle. So you expect there to be near population centers. There's just simply more people. So A. B, um, today, uh, everybody's got a smartphone with a high-resolution camera for still pictures and video. So if those were sightings, of Bigfoot, the internet would be full of high resolution photos and videos of Bigfoot trying to escape. We don't have any such data other than people's eyewitness accounts. And in science, eyewitness testimony is the lowest form of evidence. Whereas in the court of law, it's a very high form of evidence. And, and you ask a psychologist, how's that eyewitness testimony going in your <laughs> suspect who was just shocked by what they saw? It, it doesn't bode well. Then where we do have some kind of video evidence, I'm disappointed that it's sort of fuzzy monochromatic, like the Navy video that's been the Tic Tac, right? right. Uh, so if, is that the best video you have? Everybody's got a camera. And and is and and if they are aliens, are they only just revealing themselves to the Navy? That would be kind of weird. <laughs> all right, I'm just thinking, you know. <laughs> so it's fuzzy monochromatic video. So I, I don't know what those things are. I, uh, okay, and that's kind of the end of my sentence. And admitting that I don't know what it is does not give me the right to then declare that I do know what it is. Just think about that, right? I say, oh, I don't know what it is. Therefore, it must be visiting aliens from outer space, curious about us on Earth. Uh, how do you justify the rest of those conclusions? But you, by the way, go keep, if you think they're aliens, keep chasing them down. I'm just not, personally, I'm not convinced enough by fuzzy monochromatic video and testimonies from people to devote my time or energy to investigate it. But let them do it. If they can snare an, a, an alien, bring them to town hall, into the square <laughs> you don't need me <laughs> everybody will have cell phone but you won't need me you won't give a rat's ass what i think or say because right. you'll be rich and famous overnight okay here's another question and again you're an astrophysicist i'm clearly not so i always hear this well there is a, a life form out there and they're going to be super intelligent for us mere mortals and i think to myself is it possible 
if we did find a colony or a bunch of aliens, they couldn't even figure out how to use a zipper. I mean, they just did not be any smarter than me. Is it possible <laughs> we're the smarter <laughs> <they're>, form? <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> Have you looked around the world recently? <laughs> Okay. All okay. right. Wait, 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 wait. That's my first point. But that, a better argument would be if they managed to travel to Earth through the depths of interstellar space, uh -huh. they're smarter than us. Okay. They got more technology than us. Okay. All right. Uh, we haven't been out of low Earth orbit since 1973. So I'm thinking they're smarter than us. And if they're really, really, really smarter than us, we might ask why. What kind of hubris do we have to think that they're going to care what we think at all? <laughs> when you walk by a, a colony of worms, are you saying, gee, I wonder what they're thinking? Gee, <laughs> no, you don't care what they're thinking. You step on them, okay? So, so probably if they never visited us, it's because they've decided that there's no sign of intelligent life. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. That's why you're an astrophysicist. Okay. No, now, no, I, by the way, I want to get back to your quarterback. I, I read the, the, the description yeah. and he, I think it was at night, no, yeah. no brighter than twilight. And he saw a streak of light come down. It looks like it landed in, in, in town Lake or wherever it was in Austin. And, uh, that's what meteors look like they do. Okay. So a meteor, a bright meteor, uh, the, a shooting star. Yeah, there, okay, there it is. Yeah, so yeah, my yeah. UFO dropped straight out of the sky. Yeah. There it is. We stopped and looked at each other and asked if that, we, we each saw it. That's good first check to see because you have multiple sources of data. Very bright ball of light going straight down out of the sky towards Lake Travis. Okay, so what he should do is go look at what meteors look like. And most of them just look like sort of simple shooting stars, but the occasional one. The occasional bigger one is called a bolide. We have special words for them. And they fl flash through the sky. It takes just half a second. It flashes through the sky, and at the end, sometimes they explode. And so they're really beautiful, and they're called bolides. And by the way, amateur astronomers, who, by the way, are really good at looking at the night sky, do not have a higher fraction of what they see identified as UFOs because they are highly trained in what they look like because they spend their whole lives looking up at night. So um, I think if there were aliens visiting, the amateur astronomy community would catch it immediately. And, and by the way, amateur astronomer means you are an expert at the night sky. Unlike amateur neurosurgeon, you wouldn't go to that person for, <laughs> if you had an ailment. But if you, if you want to, if you want to know people who know the night sky, like the back of their hand, they're called amateur astronomers. That's been very, very good. By the way, I only have one minute left. Oh, okay. I'll talk fast. Okay, Go. okay. Is there any new data on UFOs that has emerged, or is it the same thing for the last hundred years? I'm not authorized to tell you anything. No, I'm just, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just, oh, I knocked out my headphones here. So all I'm just saying is that the I think we are all in a position to crowdsource images of visiting aliens, and so I, I can't wait till people start producing images and or, or or an alien itself and bring it into town and. And that, then you don't have to try to convince people with anybody's eyewitness testimony. Uh, th that's all. And same with Bigfoot. With Bigfoot, you, you look up Bigfoot on the Internet, the best evidence is, is, is home shot video from 1967. Is that your best evidence of a big hairy ape crawling around in the, in, in the, in the Pacific Northwest? No one else that saw him with a, with a, with a smartphone? <laughs> so... Let us ask each other these other kinds of questions about if it really were aliens, what would it be? They would, we, they, we would see them. Or if they didn't want us to see them, we wouldn't see them. And what's this about crashed flying saucers? What, what, what? That they navigate the depths of intergalactic space and they come to Earth and then they crash? I don't want to meet those aliens. Okay? <laughs> give, me, give me the ones that know how to navigate. Yeah, right. They navigate space, but they drive like, you know, we all did as teenagers the minute they hit Earth. <laughs> I have like drunk teenagers at night. No, I mean, <laughs> makes no sense. Landing flying saucers. Excuse me, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. By the way, he has a new. I'm goal. sorry. So I'm skeptical. Wait, wait, I'm skeptical, but let it, let him find it. Let him, let it happen. I want to read this book, Cosmic Queries: Star Talk's Guide to Who We Are, How We Got There, and Where We're Growing. Please, I'm going to purchase it. I hope you do, Neil. There's a whole chapter on the search for life in it. So yeah, if you're into this, go for it. Thank you for being patient and tolerating me, sir. I appreciate that once again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All we, right. We good.
Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.